welcome back to the Snow Country, the place where many interesting traditions are still alive to this day. Let's explore the kimono making techniques that were developed here. I'm sure everyone knows what a kimono is. But just in case, kimono is a beautifully decorated Japanese traditional garment. It wraps around the wearer from the back and has rectangular sleeves of varied length. The garment is usually held in place by a white sash called an obi. Some kimono are very simple and can be bought in regular stores. Others take great skills and months to complete and may be sold for a price that is comparable to an average car, or sometimes even more than an average car. But before we go any farther, please consider why kimono making, especially the latter, most, uh, more expensive types, was so successful in the snow country. There are three main reasons. The first is time. The snow country is known for its deep snowfalls. The snow is sometimes three to four meters deep, and doesn't melt for about half a year. This weather pattern began more than 600 years ago in the Jomon period. During the snowy months, people found other industries to occupy them. In the Jomon period, the Anjin weaving method was developed. Dried grass was woven together on a simple loom to create traditional capes and clothing. Over the thousands of years that, that followed, different techniques developed in the area. The latest step of which is the creation of special fabrics that are used for making the intricate kimonos. Each kimono can take up to six months to complete, which is also incidentally the same amount of time that snow country is buried in snow. The second reason is easy access to water. A great amount of water is required to make even a single kimono. The cloth needs to be washed many times throughout the process. In the snow country, rivers and melting snow provide the water that is necessary for kimono making process. The last reason is climate. The high humidity in this area is very good for growing the plants that form the natural fibers that become thread. Uh, and the humidity is also very good for the thread itself. The fibers become flexible and absorb dye more easily. All right. So armed with this information, let us embark on a journey which every kimono has to take, from simple fabric to a finished beautiful garment. So if you can see that each kimono is made from this very, very long piece of cloth. Each piece of cloth is about 13 meters long. Um, you can imagine that it's very difficult to fit whole 30 meters into one room. So actually they use these wooden boards which are sticky on both sides and they wrap the fabric around. So if you look under, uh, you can actually see the other side of the fabric. So as you see, he, you may have seen him flip it. There you go. And it's all one fabric. And then once it's uh, colored and dyed, um, they cut it into the actual design of a kimono. What we're seeing in this room is stenciling. So they use stencils that kind of have stencils like this, uh, which they apply over the stencil uh, colored glue and uh, the colored glue goes into the fabric and uh, makes a design. So a very big part of the process of designing kimonos is actually making these amazing stencils. Uh, so as you, you can see the artisan right now is, uh, he is making a stencil and he uses a small piece of kind of wood with a nail, almost like a nail, to keep the stencil in place while he colors. Uh, the stencil must be aligned perfectly and multiple times because otherwise the whole design just falls apart. So just uh, as a frame of reference, uh, each kimono requires maybe three or four hundred of these stencils. 
of course they would be used multiple times, but if you see even very tiny details like this one have to be stenciled in. Oh, so these small, small, small lines are also all made by stencils. So imagine how finely you have to cut the stencil to kind of get this tiny, tiny line. Because I mean, anybody can cut a stencil that has a big line, but these tiny, tiny, small, small details all done by stencils is amazing. The markings on the tape seem to be also very, very important. So I think these are the, guide, uh, the guides for the stencils. And the two lines over there, the two lines are, are indicate where the cuts for the kimono will be made. So once uh, the coloring process and everything is complete, they have to make this into you know, one coherent piece of clothing, which is amazing. The next step is creating the base by dyeing the cloth. Although, depending on the design, sometimes stenciling is not needed at all. As you see, this wooden pole goes into the ground and uh, the kimono is fixed on a rope, which you can move up and down. The reason for that is that uh, the length of the kimono is different. So this kimono that we see here uh, these are 13 meter uh, pieces of cloth that, you know, are for short sleeved kimonos. But some kimonos, as you know, may not have very long sleeves and it may be a lot longer. And uh, these kimonos maybe would be fixed to poles that are further away or even closer together. As you see, there's some poles, uh, some options here also. Well, you can adjust the placing of the pole depending on the length of the kimono. So they actually stretch the fabric on here and they use these kind of bamboo joints to stretch it long ways as well uh, so that every, every fiber is, max, is kind of spread out. He's using some spraying as you see, some spraying techniques. He also uses a very thick brush to kind of brush it over. So in the spray gun, this is water or maybe diluted paint, diluted dye. And if you want to create a great gradation, then you use the spray gun to put the water in. And then when the two colors meet, the place where the two colors meet, they kind of create a very nice gradation. So when they want to kind of create a very st strong line between the two colors, they don't really use a spray gun, but if they want a very gradual coming from one color to the next, then they do use a spray gun. The black lines are here to, as for guidance, to kind of tell us where uh, the colors separate. But when the fabric is washed, they actually go away with the heat, with the hot, warm temperatures. But this is incredibly beautiful. Well, here you can see that the colors are already on, and now she's painting with a, dye, with a very lighter, more liquid dye over the stencils to create the background. As you see, uh, the dye that is painted on top of the fabric, it does not reach the points that have been you know, colored by the, by the previous dye that we saw. So purple is purple, white is white, oops, sorry. And then like kind of the gradation here, everything, everything continues. And the background is now green and not white as well. So this kimono with like one color, it takes uh, the wonderful artisan about 10 minutes from start to finish, which is amazing. However, something with a more involved design with two colors and some spraying, sometimes there's more than two, three, four colors. This can take hours, so maybe two hours or three hours just for the spraying and the coloring and the dyeing, which is absolutely mind-blowing, in my opinion. So one uh, kind of uncomfortable thing about making these is that once you've started, you cannot stop. If you stop in the middle, then the way the air reacts to the colors, it may be different when you continue. So once you've started from one side, you have to go to the other side without stopping. You cannot take bathroom breaks, you cannot take, you know, Smoke breaks, nothing. You have to just continue going from start to finish. So I think I want to do the 10 minute one. <laughs>
So this is a kind of a tie dyeing technique. As you see, the places that you want to dye are sticking out from this drum. And then the places that you don't want to dye are all safely within the drum. So then now it's kind of floating in, on top of the water. So the reason that they put this right into the water uh, and kind of get it wet before actual dyeing is uh, to have the wood of the barrel to absorb the water and uh, close any kind of small, like the wood expands and closes the small cracks and also, you know, the holes where the fabric comes out also they close and none of the dye comes in. And of course, it also helps to soak the places that will be dyed with water as well. As you see, he rotates the drum to make sure that he gets enough of the color everywhere. And it is incredibly hot. So the water inside the barrel is about eight, like 80 degrees. Uh, this is why the artisan actually has water, just cold water, inside of his gloves. Because otherwise it is very, very hot. So they actually don't heat, heat up the water right in this place. Uh, there's a boil, broiler that maintains the temperature and the pipes, very, very insulated pipes as you see, they bring the hot water into here and they keep the temperature hot uh, that way. That's how they control it. Um, the colors are chosen specifically for each kimono and uh, when they're mixed, after being mixed, small samples are taken and left out for some time. Uh, well, I guess pieces of cloth are dyed and then left out to make sure that, you know, the colors are uniform and then that's enough. So here, they will, he will wash uh, the excess from the barrel. Next step is to put it into warm water with vinegar, mix of water and vinegar. I get to set the color, set and activate the color. And now he is washing out the vinegar in the water as well. So he is opening it up. Wow. Oh, it's dry. It's almost dry. It's warm, but it's dry. No, this one isn't even cold. Ah, this is... Ah, this is so cool. No red at all. <laughs> <gasps> wow, look at that! So these pins here indicate which colors need, which parts need to be colored. So first it's red, then green, yellow, and last is blue. Uh, the same dye can be used, I think, up to three times. So now that the red pin, the red pins over here have been finished, they have to dry this whole kimono, repack it again, leaving only the green, the next one out, and then dye it again, and then dry it again, and then do the yellow, and then dry it again, and then do the blue. Wow, so much work. The last step is to touch up the colors by hand. Different brushes are used to create accents and subtle gradations. This process takes the most time and effort. When done for eight hours a day, it takes a whole week. So this is a kimono. If you look closely, there are four distinct pieces which are stitched together. You can also see very, very small and intricate details, gradations in the colors and uh, small lines that are all put in there on purpose. So there are two types of kimonos. One is uh, with long flowing sleeves and very bright and uh, young and cheery uh, colors. Now, traditionally, these were worn by unmarried ladies and, you know, they had the free long flowing sleeves to indicate that they were looking for their husbands. These days, mostly they're worn by women, uh, young ladies who are coming of age when they turn 20. And now these more simple uh, kimonos with shorter sleeves, but just as intricate designs as the, the ones of the long sleeves. These are worn by, well, they can be worn by anybody, uh, particularly married ladies and women who, you know, who are more mature. 
All of the places we visited to research and create this video offered amazing experiences that allowed one to try these techniques for themselves. We went on an amazing journey that started with creating the Anjan Jomon style cloth coaster. We continued by learning to work the loom and creating a more modern style cloth. And we ended but with practicing stenciling techniques used in real kimono creation. Every step of the way, we met people who were knowledgeable and passionate about their piece of this amazing culture. Thank you.